She is an expert practitioner in corporate governance, organizational change, leadership, strategy, and business transformation. She has an international reputation for being a high-level orchestrator of complex change processes that involves large numbers of discrete initiatives and working with boards and upper echelons of business and government on optimizing performance with good governance. With over 30 years' experience, she has worked equally in the finance, banking, private and government sectors. A Big Four trained management consultant, she is a graduate of Cranfield School of Management. She holds a PhD in organizational leadership and corporate governance. She is the author of Leading Change. A Big Four trained management consultant, she is a graduate of Cranfield School of Management. She holds a PhD in organizational leadership and corporate governance. She is the author of Leading Change, published by Wiley. She uniquely applies a combination of academic rigor and practical experience to address organizational, business, and strategic issues. Her expertise and no-nonsense practical advice have helped leaders to enhance the effectiveness of their organizations and achieve strategic outcomes and growth. She is Dr. Olu Ajayi A. Welcome to Inspired. I'm excited to be here seated with our guest, Dr. Olubumi Ajayi. Dr. Olu, welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Looking radiant in your yellow. Thank you. You, <laughs> you look lovely too. Thank you. Um, so let's get into some of your accomplishments, your achievements. Not only are you the CEO of Madison Pine UK, you're also an expert practitioner in corporate governance. For those who don't know exactly what corporate governance means, what does it mean? Corporate governance really refers to the system of overseeing organizations to ensure that organizations are aligned to their corporate strategy and that organizations are well governed. So that involves having corporate governance protocols in terms of overseeing the organization. The role of the board really is to provide that oversight of the organization to make sure that the organizations are functioning, not just complying with regulations, you know, but also that there is that correlation between how the organization is governed and the performance of the organization. So in a sense, it's about having controls in place. That's what corporate governance is about controls and oversight. Controls and oversight. And you have over 30 years experience in this. I do, yes. My background is in management consulting. So big four, Oracle, so many big consulting companies. And I've consulted extensively internationally. So I got into corporate governance because as an African slash Chinese saying goes, the fish rots from the head. So it's actually very important, there is an imperative to actually start the work of transforming organizations and institutions by starting with the board, ensuring that the board is effective and competent and able to steer the organization towards its desired performance goals. And you are the author of the book, Leading Change. That's correct. Yeah. And what you just spoke about can we see some of these things in, in the book? Yeah, absolutely, because change is all about, you know, transformation, you know, how to get organizations from point A to point B, you know, whilst making sure that you minimize, you know, the burden, you know, of the transformation journey on the business. And change is everywhere. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's with us to stay, especially in times like this. You know, we live in a vocal world now, a world that, you know, due to the pandemic, you know, and even as a result of financial crisis over the years, uh, it's more volatile, you know, it's more uncertain, it's more ambiguous, mm -hmm. you know, and it's more complex, you know. So we must anticipate change because we live with it. So we must learn to be proactive and not to be reactive, not wait for change to happen, but we can actually shape change. You know, and when it talks about organizations and you know, creating the future for organizations, now you have to work with multiple realities and multiple scenarios. You know, and you know, the change we want is the change we create. The 
change we want is the change we create. That's correct. And you are so passionate about servant the leadership. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? There's been a lot written about leadership. It's the most researched topic you know, in the world. Uh, it's a universal phenomenon. And so there's transactional leadership, transformational leadership. Servant leadership really is based on the ethos of service. You know, and it's a new definition of leadership, which is not necessarily leading from the front, but leading from the back. You know, so you're building up people, you know, as you learn with them and you co-create with them the organization. So you're a participant in it. You know, you roll up your sleeves. You don't just, you know, sit by the side of the trenches you know, and back orders. And servant leadership really is based on the premise of humility, which is core, you know, the essence of leadership, you know, that's a core ingredient of it, you know. So really it's about knowing your, your place in the organization, is really to serve the organization, is really to serve your employees, is really to serve the government if you're working for government, is really to serve the people. And how do you serve people? First, you've got to know them. You've got to know what they need. You've got to meet them where they're at, you know, and then you've got to design, you know, the change and the support, you know, and the performance and all the improvements that are needed to be made. The problem is there are too many leaders and want to be leaders. Everybody wants to be a leader. Nobody wants to serve. But actually, we lead through service. Leadership emerges, it evolves, and it evolves from learning how to serve first. Many people want to go into leadership straight away. So what we have is we have billions of positional leaders. You know, they have been given positions to lead without actually understanding what it means to be a leader. You don't call yourself a leader. It's the lead that call you a leader. So it depends on how you lead people. They call you a leader because of how you have served them. So servant leadership will be the difference between the CEO who just writes the checks and doesn't know anybody's name versus the CEO who um, is at the relatable human level, interacting, participating, building the company. You see them actively um, uh, building the structures and, and you, 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 they feel as though they're part Absolutely, absolutely. And also, you know, leadership is dispersed across the organization. Leadership, leadership does, not, does not just sit at the top of the organization. It's dispersed. You find leaders at different levels of the organization. And we've got to find those gems and celebrate them as leaders because they are leaders as well. It's so critical, so critical to understand that there are layers of leadership. It's called distributed leadership. Mm -hmm. And for us to build sustainable, impactful, strong and vibrant organizations or strong and vibrant communities, we've got to distribute leadership. Distribute leadership at every level. So at every level. Those who rise up to the challenge can... Yeah, it's, you know, it's distributing accountability and responsibility as well. Accountability and responsibility. Those are, th when you speak of leadership, those are two words that sometimes I feel I don't hear enough. Mm. Um, and that makes up, would you say, uh, what, some attributes for best leadership? Very important, but you know, you are asked to be accountable mm. and you are asked to be responsible. When it comes to what I believe are core to effective leadership, I mean, for me, number one would be, I talk about the three C's, you know, and the first C will be competences. Leaders must be competent. They must be subject matter experts in whatever they do, whether it's political leadership, whether it's spiritual leadership, you know, spiritual leaders must know the word. So they must be subject matter experts in whatever it is they do. Competences are so key. In our part of the world, we have leaders who are not competent. 
the second thing for me, you know, the second C, you know, will be courage. Courage is so critical. And I'm actually doing a lot of research now. I'll be doing some publication on uh, the, in the area of courageous leadership. It is, courage is essential. And I'll come back to that later, perhaps as I finish, uh, because it is what is most lacking when it comes to leadership. Because you have to be courageous to make tough decisions. Tough decisions that will bring about the much needed change. And, you know, this, the, the third C I want to talk about is compassion. Leaders having compassion for their people, for their employees. It's, it's really critical that we must be compassionate. When we are compassionate about our staff, our people, we do things differently Absolutely. because there is that empathy. And again, leadership is again coming back, it's to serve. And the question is, why are you leading? To what end? To whose benefit? And we find that sometimes when people come into power, whether it is in an organization or it is political power, you know, you find that compassion is missing. And when compassion is missing, it flaws decision making because decisions that they're not made for the benefit of the people or for the employees. Mm. Wow. There's a lot, a lot to take in and a lot to digest. And mm. I want to go back to the second C, courage. Mm. Dr. Oli, when did you find your courage to do what you are able to do right now? Courage is not something one is born with. Courage is tested. Courage is something that keeps growing, but it is tested. You don't know how courageous you are until you're tested. A lot of people say, I'm, I'm bold, but have you ever been tested? Um, my courage came from trauma, actually. You know, I mean, if one were to ask me to write the story of my life, as I am often being asked, I always ask, you know, what particular book do you want? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just one book, it's a series of books, mm -hmm. like an, a set of en encyclopedia. And so I am very blessed, you know, but my life has been one of struggle, you know, so, um, but I keep falling forward. Mm -hmm. So series of falls, I think, when you fall in so many times, uh, for someone like me, I just refuse to stay down. You won't give up? No, I talk to myself a lot. And I always say, this cannot be my reality. I'm not taking this. I tell myself that I will not accept this. This is not my reality. And God has enabled me, you know, to to get up every time. And that's why now I know God trusts me because I have been tested. And I always say to people in life, even when it comes to leadership, you take the army, for example, there are different caters of officers from recruits, lieutenants, majors, generals, field marshals. They go through different boot camps. They go, if you've been called to be a general or a field marshal, pain is part of the package. Trauma is part of the package. Challenge is part of the package. And having grown up pretty much by myself over the years, I had become very strong. Mm. But God said he wanted to use me. And he said, for that reason, he had to break me first so he could use me. Dr. Olu, we're going to get deeper into how God has really used you in, in the corporate world um, and just in to be able to impact people on a personal level. But we're going to take a quick break right now. You are watching Inspired. You don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Inspired. I'm here with Dr. Olu. And before the break, you were telling us about how you, I, I love this, how you fall forward. Mm. You didn't just say you've fallen, meaning you've had to pick yourself back up, but you fall forward. Mm. So you keep going. Um, your inspirations, as you've been inspiring people, impacting your mm. industries, impacting companies, who has been pouring into you and inspiring you? It's in, that's a very interesting question, actually, because leadership can you can you know can be um, a place of isolation. isolation. You know, uh, I think the higher um, one gets, um, they say it can be quite lonely at the top. It is, it is actually, and you know, think of a pyramid. Okay, you know, so you're at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You're developing yourself. There are lots of people around you, you know, everybody looking for purpose, for inspiration, you know. And then as you go higher and higher, you know, um, the kind of your circle, you know, it, uh, it, 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 it contracts, you know. And also that's part of God's pruning process because some, some people you cannot take with you to where God is taking you. I've, I've heard that over and over again, so th this is true. Yeah, this is very even if you want them, he will take them away because he has a plan for your life and he's going to select, if you let him, those he wants to walk with you on that journey. You know, they could be those who will hold your hands, they could be your cheerleaders, they could be what they call destiny helpers, but he chooses. He chooses, and we've got to let him do that. So by the time you get to, and there is no top, to be honest. I just use the example of a pyramid. I don't believe there is a top. I don't have a ceiling. You know, I don't have that. You know, God defines, you know, how far he wants me to go. You know, but by the time you start getting up and up, you know, and up is your own up. You know, people always look at other people's up and think maybe that's their up. But by the time you get there, you know, you find that, there are only a few people around you, and you'll be so fortunate to find one or two people, you know, that you can actually uh, share your dreams with, share your challenges with. It becomes harder, the, you know, the, the higher uh, one gets. But God will always surround you, but he picks. He picks. He picks. He picks. And it's about seasons. There's some people that are there for a season. Uh, the mistake we make you know, is, you know, when we want to take people from an old season into a new season. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of mistakes, challenges, what's been the most prominent moment in your life where you thought, wow, this could really break me, and you bounce back, and you look back, and now it's like dust off your shoulder? Yes. Um, if he Years ago, many years ago, uh, I was actually uh, invited by an African country, I wouldn't mention them, uh, to do some work for them. Uh, I, I did that twice. The first time was bad, didn't get paid, but you know, I was using my European mindset where as a consultant you do the work and you invoice afterwards and they will pay you. Um, I didn't, so that was quite shocking. Flew back to the UK, uh, but then, you know, I had never really wanted to work in Africa or with Africa. Uh, but then I kept getting this call, you know, so I was responding because I thought it's time to go and give back to my continent. The second one was worse because we actually started the work with some consultants and, you know, they were getting paid for the work uh, because the contract was with the company and not with that state government it was. Uh, they never paid. And I ended up losing my home in the UK. I lost my house. I had to sell everything, really. And it was awful because my daughter just graduated. And it was awful. I can't even describe it. And she was walking back home from work and she saw all her stuff, you know, on the road because they had to take the home, you know, uh, because, you know, the company had gone bankrupt because we hadn't been paid. Uh, so I lost everything. I love artwork. You know, I sold my paintings. I sold everything, really. And I remember we had to move into this uh, little place, so small that I had to leave my furniture, which were handmade, outside. 
because there was nowhere to put them. And I remember, I, I didn't know how I could recover from that, to be perfectly honest, you know. In that moment, and did it look like it was, it was just over? Did it look like, what did it look like to you? It's funny, interestingly, because, you know, that was not one of the worst moments in my life, but it was bad. <laughs> so I never thought it was over. My question was, how do I recover? I never thought it was the end of my life, you know. Uh, people actually call me the bounce back kid, you know, and I've seen God work in my life, you know. And maybe it was part of the breaking, you know, because he had to crush me first before he could make great use of me. But I remember sitting at home one day, you know, I was depressed like one would be, you know, my daughter saying, why did you have to go and work with Africans? <laughs> we were okay, we were fine. And um, I remember uh, having nothing, to be honest. And I sat there and God told me, just stop feeling sorry for yourself. Just get out, get up and get out. And he said, I'll meet you at the point of action. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So I just started going out. Uh, I was working on my PhD, you know, just started going. I was, I'm a fellow of the Royal Society of um, Arts, RSA. I started going there. Uh, somehow, they kind of forgot I hadn't paid my membership fee for that year. <laughs> So I was able to go there for, you know, and I wasn't asked to pay the membership fee. Oh, wow. And uh, that was it, really, to be honest. And God just started building again. And it, it kept saying, just keep going, you know. And so I had to start from scratch. And, you know, and I started from scratch and it was so difficult. Uh, but you see, one thing is God has given me a beautiful brain. So I can always start again because, and God has given me a divine ability to create wealth. Divine and ability to create wealth. wealth. And no matter what I lose, I can't lose my brain because it's just there. So it's just, you know, you pick it up and start using it again. And that's one thing I've got nobody can take away from me. So Dr. Lou, is it safe to say you have a tremendous winning mentality absolutely and I'm absolutely you know people describe me as having a rare form of resilience mm. I'm tenacious and super resilient it's um, it's not gonna break me I'm, I'm, I'm just so determined you know again like I said the future we want is a future we create you know and I know it's what God wants for me right. so um, I know I was interviewed once uh, I think by this BBC reporter, and he said, but you've been through a lot in your life. And I paused for a moment, you've been broken badly. And I paused and I said, yeah, but I was broken for good. I was broken. I mean, where would the testimonies be? I encourage young women, young men, and I tell them, you, you, can, you can be anything you want to be. And even for women, you know, they talk about glass ceiling. So it's glass ceiling. When you know yourself, there's no ceiling. Because with God, there isn't a ceiling. When you know who you are, you know your stuff. There is no ceiling. You can go as far as you want. I love that. With God, there's no ceiling. There is no ceiling. And I, I love how you mentioned just a little bit earlier that there's, there's no top. No, there is no like top. top. Who exactly. Can determine that for your I mean, when people God. say think out of the box, I'm like, whose box? <laughs> Who created the box? Who created whose the box, box is in it? The first place. You know, so there is no top. No one can define how far I can go. And maybe that's why I'm not really an institutional person. <laughs> I'm totally unemployable because I'm not a job description person. You can determine when I'm going to get promoted. You can determine how much I'm going to be earning. You can be determined when I take a vacation. You can determine when I stop working. You can determine when I get a pension. God determines that. You can't. You know, it's giving too much power into people's hands. It's okay for some, but it's not for me. And I always tell people, the only way is not up. Who's up? That could be somebody else's up. Is it your up? Mm -hmm. You can actually go sideways and go this way. You know, you can go sideways and go there. You can even 
be here because there's gold at the bottom of the pyramid. Just find the right business. That is so true. Find the right idea. But everybody, you know, wants to go to the top or they want to work for an office. Or it's not for everyone. You can create your own reality. First thing is just find what you're good at, what you love. Even when they don't pay you, you still want to do it. I love what I do. I am what I do. I am what I do. Yes. Wow. I don't need slides. I don't need anything. It's innate in me. I am what I do. And I'm my own product. I'm my own brand. And I always tell people, don't become stale. Think of yourself like a product, like an iPhone. They keep re-releasing it. Re-release yourself. Update yourself. Yeah, <laughs> update yourself, upgrade yourself. Upgrade yourself, that's the one, that's the one. You know, so for me, it's about Dr. Olu release 11.1. You know, next year I'm going to be, you know. <laughs> Love it. 13.5. That's right. You know, that's me. Because the, Dr. Olu, you meet today, when you meet me in December, I won't be the same. Mm. I'm always evolving. evolving. Always changing, remaining relevant remaining inspirational, you know, and energetic. Fantastic. I hope we are being inspired at home because I'm, I definitely am, and we can't just leave it right here. So when we come back, we're just gonna unravel a little bit more. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Sadly, women, men help men. Men help men a lot. Especially in business. They help each other a lot. Women tend not to. And this is based on empirical evidence, especially in our part of the world. There is that pull the ladder behind you syndrome. Jealousy? Jealousy is there, yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Olu, I want to thank you for your transparency, um, especially on this side of the world where we are, and specifically West Africa and Ghana to be more precise. And you are Nigerian. Mm -hmm. You're a Nigerian woman, a Nigerian businesswoman, a mother, entrepreneur, so many things. The list goes on and on, <laughs> but only for the sake of time. Um, but can we go just, you know, I mean, everything you said has been deep, it's been transparent, insightful. Um, but let's talk about women in business, especially in Africa now. You are based in the UK, but you've, you've traveled all over. Your clients are all over. I mm. mean, you've got such an amazing <laughs> clientele list. Um, but um, women in, in, in Africa, um, Nigeria, uh, women CEOs, I mean, surpass more than probably any in any country. Absolutely, um, yes. Uh, entrepreneurship, small businesses in Ghana, is, it's... it's, it's it's, it's been big for such a long time, but there are challenges, and there are challenges we don't like to talk about. Mm. And I mean, you've traveled all over, and you've seen from every level and dimension. Um, uh, sexual harassment is, mm. is, is mm. huge and mm -hmm. prevalent, especially in our African communities mm. and in our corporate spaces. And uh, sometimes a lot of young women don't want to venture out because every step they go, they're faced mm. with this issue. Mm. Um, what would you tell women, not even young, just women of every age, are just really trying to make something of themselves, mm. trying to have a decent living, provide for their families? Mm. Um, um, what can you share? It is very difficult. It is very, very difficult, uh, especially in this part of our world. Um, because, you know, for example, in the United Kingdom, and quite commonly across Europe, you know, and some other continents. There is support, a lot of support for people who want to go into business. If you want to, you know, so many funds, so many, you know, the, the, there's cash there, you know, even the banks will help you. So there's a lot of help available. Uh, in our part of the world, sadly, that is not so much the case. 
Um, I know in Ghana they have the uh, Ghana uh, Enterprises Agency, you know, and they're doing their best. You know, their CEO is amazing and she's doing a lot of work. But there's still so much to be done. And even that is still, you know, at that very uh, lower scale, you know. And, you know, what we need, you know, is, you know, for governments, you know, to invest more, you know, for example, in women. Uh, who want to go into tech, for example. You know, there are lots of great businesses women want to go into in the areas of strategy, marketing, setting up their own consultancies. You know, the upper end, you know, of business. It is very difficult. Um, sexual harassment is a big problem. You know, I have experienced it so many times myself. And it can be difficult when, you know, you're struggling, you know, or one's parents are not well to do. And it might be much easier, you know, for younger ladies, you know, to, uh, to, to give in to the temptation of being looked after, you know, by an older, richer man. Um, it's always there. But then there are those few who, regardless, you know, of the extreme conditions they might be facing, you know, would rather choose, you know, to, to brave it, you know, and to look for other means with the help of God, you know, to become what God has created them to, to be as in, in business, you know. Uh, I had to do that. And I remember having to tell one multi-millionaire many, many, many years ago, and that was a time I was going through a tough time. I've had so many tough times. And he promised me the world. And I've met a few of them. You know, the world, this and that. But number one, I'm not moved by those things. Actually, I like to make my own money. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I like to make my own money. Thank you. I don't want to be given anything. And I thank God, you know, where I am, I'm very contented. You know, and I can do whatever I want to do. So if you're coming, it's got to be to compliment my life. There is no hole there and I don't lack for anything. Amen. You know, with God, you've got everything anyway. And I had to tell the man, you know, I may not be where I want to be, but I'll get there. I'll get there. And so women have to have that mentality. You know, it's, there's, not, there's, a, there's a proverb, you know, a saying that goes, you know, uh, when you want something with all your heart, and this is something that God has told you, you know, is going to make it happen. The whole world, the whole universe will conspire together to make it happen. Again, it's about patience. Mm. You know, women have to be, young women have to be patient. patient. You know, patient with the process of developing, developing themselves. You know, patient, if you have a dream, stick to it. Don't have a plan B. Once you have a plan B, you've already failed. When you have a dream, the thing is, it starts with a dream. We've got to encourage women to dream. To dream. What is your dream? Mm. What is your dream? It starts. It always starts with a dream. Everything we see around us today, even Madison Pine, started with a dream. With a dream. We've got to encourage them. There's more education, uh, you know, around, you know, uh, how to boost the self-esteem and confidence of women. There's a lot of work to be done. And I'm glad you said you're interested in coaching, you know, and mentoring, because there is a lot of work to be done in that area. You know, so women can get to know who they are without somebody telling them, if you don't know who you are, somebody will tell you who you are. Uh, absolutely, I, absolutely, I completely, I completely agree. And you mentioned, um, you know about um, from the home you know maybe if you're growing up in a situation where your parents are not well to do um, it's possible to be more susceptible to be lured in to Absolutely. situations you may yes. not necessarily want to be and um, knowing who you are you know you notice in this day and age I, I call it like microwave generation mm -hmm. you know things are at the click of a button and uh, we're looking at people's lifestyles you know on television or on social media and there's no patience you want it instantly mm -hmm. I want what mm -hmm. they have I want what they have mm -hmm. um, or material but no character building mm -hmm. um, 
So also, um, what about mentorship? Because you're a mentor to many. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's uh, maybe a slight lack of mentorship uh, on where we are standing on our side of the world? I know? think so. I think so. You know, it's more common in other parts of the world. Right. Because yesterday, Naomi was telling me she just, you know, was at a mentoring session for young people. You know, and also it's because we have that volunteering mentality. We give our time, you know. Mm -hmm. We give our time. We've got to encourage more successful women you know, to give their time to mentoring young ladies. I do it all the time because I never had a mentor until I grew up. And it was a man, Professor Patrick Petroni, and he shaped my life because he saw what I could not see in myself and he helped me to develop it. We need people who can do that, you know, because I got that from Professor Petroni. I give it, I give it freely, I give my time freely. You know, actually, one of the questions we were going to ask me was, you know, if you were to ask me, you know, who am I? Who is Dr. Olu? And I will tell you, because I know it so well now. I am a builder. That's what I do. I build people, I build dreams, and I build institutions and nations. I build. I am a builder. Oh, Dr. Olu is a builder, a phenomenal one, well decorated, well. Um, uh, so well versed in your mm. field. Mm. So for the young people, it's know yourself. Know yourself. Know yourself. And for the for those who are successful, sadly, women men help men. Men help men a lot. Especially in business. They help each other a lot. Women tend not to. And this is based on empirical evidence, especially in our part of the world. There is that pull the ladder behind you syndrome. Jealousy. Jealousy is there, yes, Indeed. you know, but also it's, there is very little sincerity. If you want to help people grow, you don't tell them success stories. You tell them about your failures and about how you made it through. Because they're already looking at themselves like they are failing. So if you want to tell them your success story, that's not going to inspire them. You tell them about your failures and how God helped you to turn things around. And that engages them to say they can turn it around. Even if you're a young woman who's falling into the trap of being, you know, lured by, you know, older men, you can get out. You can. It's not the end. That was a chapter. But you can turn it around. But you need women who will be honest enough to say, I was there, but look at me now. I was there. And I think I went through all my experiences so that I can relate to women on so many levels. Because what are you going to tell me you're facing? I can tell you I've been there, but look at me. And I'm still work in progress. Watch out for the next release. <laughs> That's it. Watch out for that. And we will be watching out for <laughs> <laughs> Not to take away from anything you said, but I mean, you have so much more to give in you. So for your... For your viewers there, especially the young people, let them just have a, a little piece of Dr. Olu before the show ends. I will just tell, you know, the viewers, do not be afraid. Be courageous. Pray for courage. That's what it's going to take, you know. Believe in yourself. Find yourself first. Find yourself and destiny will find you. Thank you. Dr. Olu, it's been an absolute pleasure. You've inspired me. The viewers are inspired. Absolutely. I, if you're not, I don't know, send me a message on Instagram, but I believe everybody's inspired. Um, how can people draw more from your mentorship? What's available to them? I do have a for more programs uh, from time to time. I run workshops. Uh, my, the one I love the most is uh, titled, Who Do You Think You Are? So it's very challenging, but you know, it starts digging and digging into who do you think you are? Most people believe in perceptions of themselves, which is not the reality. You know, the you know, fundamental principle of in philosophy is the Delphic motto, know thyself. Everything begins from there. So you need to go on that journey of self-discovery. 
self-discovery, uh, to find yourself. And I also coach and mentor informally. Uh, my office, you know, everybody knows if you work with me and I don't like using work for me. If you work with me, you know, I'm much more than just Dr. Olu. I'm a mentor, I'm a teacher, I'm a coach because I want to grow people. That's what I do, I build them. So they're not with me just to work for the company. They're passing through. It's like uh, a training program, a life training program. That's how I see people who work for my companies. It's part of their training, their life training. They're being prepared. And I'm ready when they're ready to fly to just support them. Push them a little and let them fly. Well, Dr. Olu, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, your wisdom, your teaching, and your mentorship. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me again. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you all who have watched, and I hope you've enjoyed this conversation with Dr. Olu. I know I have. Please follow us on our social media handles on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube at Dominion Television. Until next time, stay blessed.